high. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is very common and it makes up about 90% of all cases of diabetes mellitus. Genetic disposition plays a role in development of this type of diabetes mellitus. However, there is a relative insulin deficiency which means that the patients are not necessarily dependent on an exogenous supply of insulin. Insulin release can be normal or even increased, but the target organs have a diminished sensitivity to insulin. Most of the patients with type 2 diabetes are overweight. The obesity is the result of very little physical activity, genetic disposition, and excess food intake. The imbalance between energy supply and expenditure increases the concentration of fatty acids in the blood. This in turn reduces glucose utilization in muscle and fatty tissues. The result is a resistance to insulin and this forces an increase of insulin release from the beta cells. Eventually, there is down regulation of receptors and that raises insulin resistance. Also, there is reduced breakdown of fat which gets stored and leads to obesity. Obesity is an important trigger but not the sole cause of diabetes type 2 and uh, more important is already existing genetic disposition to reduce insulin sensitivity. In this case, several genes have already been defined and promote development of obesity and type 2 diabetes. If there is a strong genetic disposition, type 2 diabetes can already occur at a young age. This is called maturity onset diabetes of the young. Reduced insulin sensitivity predominantly affects glucose metabolism. However, normal fat and protein metabolism are well maintained. Therefore, type 2 diabetes tends to cause massive hyperglycemia without corresponding impairment of fat metabolism. So, relative insulin deficiency can also be caused by autoantibodies against receptors or insulin. Even without any genetic disposition, diabetes can occur in the course of other diseases such as pancreatitis, with destruction of the beta cells or even by toxic damage to these cells. The development of diabetes mellitus is promoted by an increased release of antagonistic hormones. Among these are somatotropin that is in the case of acromegaly, also glucocorticoids in Cushing's disease or in stressful situations, and this is sometimes called the steroid diabetes. Also epinephrine release could trigger the development of diabetes mellitus and also progestogens and uh, choreomammotropins in pregnancy could also trigger the development of diabetes mellitus. However, this should be resolved after delivering the baby or after the end of pregnancy. Also, ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone could also trigger the development of diabetes mellitus as well as thyroid hormones and glucagon. Severe infections increase the release of several of these hormones, thereby giving way for the manifestation of diabetes mellitus. Thanks for watching. Remember to like this video and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next one.